Well, good morning and welcome to Gavit 2013. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, Dr. Hakuta, please uh, tell us your name and your position. Uh, my name is Kenji Hakuta and I'm a professor at Stanford University School of Education. And I also chair the Understanding Language Initiative, uh, which looks at the Common Core and English language learners. Wonderful, thank you. Um, what is the content and significance of your work? Um, I think we're, we're trying to take advantage of this particular moment in time uh, when uh, there's a lot of attention being paid to the Common Core and to the Next Generation Science Standards. And both of those are, are significant because it's not just um, something that's happening in California, but in a large number of states that have, that have adopted it. Uh, and so there's a, a critical mass of, of, of stakeholders who are involved in, in, in trying to implement the new standards. And what makes the new standards particularly interesting from a ELL and language point of view is that they tend to characterize the development of the content in terms of the ways in which students can express through discourse and through the uses of language their knowledge of the content. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, now, can, uh, can you please tell us, you know, from your personal experience, when um, or where you saw or felt the power of language, mm -hmm. and and what it's been like for you knowing to knowing more than one language? Yeah, you know, for me, I think I think. Language tends to be um, invisible in most times when, uh, just especially for monolinguals, I think it's it's invisible um, to because you just are, are using it, so it's sort of like fish noticing water or not noticing water, and uh, and yet there are times when language really sort of pokes its its head or you know, knowing two languages, you know, knowing two languages really uh, really helps. And, um, I'm always impressed by uh, situations where translation or interpretation is called for. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, you know, when all of a sudden you realize that you really need two languages to communicate, and uh, and I'm always struck when I see um, uh, young bilingual children uh, helping their parents negotiate their way through. Uh, through either you know, hospitals or, in, you know, often kids are put in positions of real responsibility uh, in having to do those tasks, but mm -hmm. just the way in which that gets um, uh, gets handled and managed by, by young bilinguals is always impressive to me. Um, I, I feel like that's a, a, a skill and an ability that you could really leverage mm -hmm. um, in, in really promoting bilingual development. Because, because it, it's really not just, you know, it, it, it's, it's far more than Google Translate. You know, it's far, far more than just sort of getting it, you know, input in one language and output in the other. But it really is taking the perspective of others. These are, a lot of these are, are, are you know, what we call soft skills or 21st century mm -hmm. skills. So I'm always impressed when I see instances. Of Were you ever in that position? You know, I have, I, have, I, I actually spent uh, uh, a year of my life Working as a translator interpreter um, in, Jap in, in Japan, uh -huh. uh, but but I also um, have used. You know, here, here's an interesting instance. I was once sitting next to a woman from China on a plane, um, and she was having difficulty understanding the the meal order. This was when they were serving meals on mm -hmm. planes. But, <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> And, uh, and 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 so we communicate. She she really didn't understand. I don't I don't speak Chinese, but but we share characters. Oh, okay. So the the, the you know, Japanese is a subset of the, the Chinese characters, and and so I started writing the, writing in characters uh -huh. for her, and she would write in characters, and we ended up having a conversation. Oh, uh, interesting. It wasn't real conversation. It was just communicating okay. using you know using characters, and I realized wow, this is really a very very kind of interesting conversation right. so it was enough to to you know break that right barrier of, of yeah science. all of a sudden there was yeah there was a real <laughs> communication going on that's, yeah. mm -hmm. that's great how about with your parents were you ever an interpreter for your parents in any situation uh, i have been yes oh, uh -huh. okay. yeah yeah so, so that's yeah, yeah so you see it helps, uh -huh. yes, right. from a lived experience right. as well that's right. yes <laughs> okay, that's good okay tell us um 
why uh, Kabe is important in the field of education? Well, I, I think Kabe has always been a very strong voice um, for uh, the, um, the movement to not think of bilingualism or the status of an English language learner as a deficit to be uh, to be made up. That is just, you know, learning English is yet another task of, of many things that you expect children to, to grow in and, and not think of, oh my God, these kids are lacking in English. And I think um, bilingual education is a really important way to do it. And, and you know, it's, uh, it, 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 it's withstood the, the, the test of the political turmoils of Prop 227, which I think uh, anything that could survive 227 is, is, is pretty solid. <laughs> and and um, unfortunately, that's sort of behind us now. But I, 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 I've always admired Kabe for supporting you know, real efforts to develop um, the bilingual resources of the state, uh, its role in, in uh, advocating for the seal of literacy, and I'm talking about the real, real positive you know, developing the natural resources, basically, that, that, that families bring from other, from other cultures and other languages. That's right. And thank you so much for contributing mm -hmm. to our mm -hmm. efforts as an organization. Greatly valued. Thank you. And lastly, um, how would you describe Gabe's annual conference and, and what it means in the bilingual world? Well, I think I think it's it's uh, it's it's probably one of the the liveliest state conferences, you know, of, of bilingual associations that I've, I've been to. California is a huge state in terms of English language learners. Um, I'm always impressed by the uh, the uh, the range of, of positions that people hold in countries. People from higher education uh, to, all the way to parents and, and community advocates. Uh, teachers, of course, but school administrators, um, principals, uh, district leaders, even superintendents in some cases. So, you know, education is a really complex endeavor where we have many, many uh, layers of both deliverers and stakeholders. Uh, and I think, you know, Kabe is really uh, you know, uh, richly represents a lot of the, the layers. Thank you. And do you have any words of wisdom or inspiration for our bilingual, both uh, learners and teachers? Well, I think I think you know the I think hostility to bilingualism has really um, waned, and I think you know I, I do think that 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 was one of my biggest uh, takeaways from the, the 2012 elections uh, that that anyone who's hostile to these things or thinks of it as a problem uh, that'll go away uh, you know, are, are, are going to continue to lose elections. And so I think, I th I think the, you know, the tide finally has, has shifted and so we're, we're kind of on, a, on an upswing. That's right, that's a good thing. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time and for being You're with welcome. us and for delivering our keynote speech, right, speech for this morning. Me here. I appreciate it, okay. thank you so much.